Welcome to Risk Management Module 2 of the Project Management Series. Up until this point, we've basically defined our complete project. Project scheduling, planning uh, for cost control has been complete. Scope, time, resources, all of that's already been defined. At the back of every experienced project manager's mind, however, there is that however, that but. There's a little bit of uncertainty. There's that other information that needs to be recorded. It may be something about the scope where you think that the scope is insufficient and you need something else to find there. There's going to be change orders, perhaps in the duration, the amount of time it takes, start and end dates because of some other factor, a customer sign off, a decision making point, some resources. Could be the resources themselves. Whichever way it is, there is a level of uncertainty and typical project plans don't lend themselves to exploring, examining, recording or doing anything about that level of uncertainty or risk. This slide is a little facetious, but it, it captures the essence of the situation. If we focus everyone's attention on every, everything else surrounding this particular project plan and schedule, then the risks will essentially disappear out of everyone's mind. Alternately, effective risk management involves identification of the risks and recording of those risks identified, quantification, if we cannot quantify, we can't understand and measure, planning responses to the risks that we identify, and monitoring and controlling the risks. We begin by identifying a risk and every risk is identified by a risk statement. If a specific event occurs by a given date, it will result into this specific impact. This impact on the construction project itself, the scope, the work breakdown structure, to the costs or to the quality of the project itself. Once we have the risk statement in hand, we do an analysis and we look at the event we assign it a probability, how likely is this to occur. We look at the impact, rate the probability and impact, and give this, pro this particular risk a priority ranking. In most projects, we can only address the top three or the top 10, the most significant risks. So we want to prioritize our time and our resources. Here are some examples of some risk statements. We've used a simple Excel spreadsheet to record these. We first of all record what task or part of the work breakdown structure we're discussing and how what the event or threat is to that particular task. The probability of it happening, we're assigning a probability on a scale of 1 to 10. Similarly, an impact on a scale of 1 to 10, and we multiply those two together to get an overall rating. We do this for all the risks that we've identified, and then, of course, we have a priority ranking of them subsequently. Instead of using a simple Excel spreadsheet and working about th worrying about that kind of paperwork, we can also recommend why not use a digital tool? Something like, and here we've used a particular tool, RiskMP, RiskMP.com. It allows you, and it leads you through the process, but it allows you to simply import your, your project plan, identify the risks. It will give you a spot to record the date, the impact, um, date identified. It does the, rec basically it does the recording for you. And then produces a risk identification report, room to study the impact and record they prioritize, record responses, etc. Another way, a technique of examining the different impacts or prioritizing risk is looking at the expected value or discussing the risk impact only in terms of monetary effect. And this, as we see on the screen right now, is an example of that. Uh, supplier strike, the probability is 50-50. 
The impact if that supplier strike occurs is $500,000. So the expected value is half of that $250,000. We multiply priority by impact. So that is a different way of ranking, analyzing, prioritizing risk in some companies insist on this particular method or have adopted this method. And the digital report, of course, allows you to record either of these types of uncertain risk impact. Once you've got the risks identified, we develop some mitigation plans to address all of the risks that we're going to be dealing with. We don't want to be in firefighting mode. Instead, what we're doing and why we are doing this whole risk management is so we are, we are identifying the fact that we need fire escapes. We're looking to see that they are in every room and we're just making sure that they're not blocked by furniture or boxes or something. Uh, weekly or daily updates by those who are responsible in, for the mitigation plans. Tracking, recording of risks and reviewed prior to the project to ensure that there is no process or schedule improvement that we can do. Avoidable risks don't have to be repeated in every project. And then tracking of the risks as we go through the, the actual project uh, built. Again, I highly recommend digital tools using something like Risk MP on your computer. It records your basic risk statement, date of plan. You've got the action plans, the owners, and the progress. And you can simply at the press of a button, produce one of these reports for each of your project management meetings throughout the life of the project. So, yeah. so here is uh, um, some of the reasons why you want to use a digital tool like RiskMP. You've got in front of you a, a calendar of the, and this is one of the expected costs, but it actually tells you when you are going to be facing the risk. So you can see right here in February or in April, we have some significant risk management that we have to be addressing. These are the ones that are upcoming, the ones that are most uh, relevant this month, for instance. Uh, top risks by costs, all the risks in the project, and severe risks. The severe ones, of course, being a typical industry classification, those things that put a stop to the project or to the company. Uh, here is one, an example of the identification simply flowing through the tasks and identifying each one of those tasks in the project scope that actually has a risk associated with it. And then identifying what those risks are, the dates, the impact, simply guiding you through the process. This software will guide you through the process so even the less experienced among you can actually do a very uh, effective risk management plan. Analysis of the risk. This happens in meetings. What are we going to do about it? What are the possibilities? What are those costs? And then we can compare, compare the expected cost of the risk to the expected cost of the response plan and see which ones will be effective and which ones will go ahead. Recapping. Risk management. Why do we do risk management? to minimize your exposure to financial losses. It's the second portion of scheduling and cost control. We want to deliver the project on time and on budget so that you're making money, so your subs are making money and they're happy, and most importantly, your customers are happy.